So you've opened up a treadmill that you're scrapping and inside is an MC60 and you're elated because this is the easiest treadmill motor controller to hack. You simply hook a potentiometer up to these three terminals right here and away you go. But what about the other components inside the treadmill? This guy right here, this guy right here. Functionally, these are basically the same. What do they do and what other uses do we have for them? Let's find out. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So these control boards have several things integrated into them, several functions that they are designed to do on a treadmill. One thing they do with these three terminals here, and I believe it's this bank here, is to control the incline motor on said treadmill. But what else do they do? Well, this is a transformer and it's designed to convert AC voltage of one voltage down or up to a different voltage. And so that's a pretty good indicator that this is going to be part of a power supply, especially since we have these two medium sized capacitors. Typically those are used to clean DC power after it's been stepped down as AC power and converted with either a rectifier or an SCR type chip. So that is the first thing that you can do with a board like this. They can be used as a power supply. Now I have a video that I did, oh, it had to have been a couple of years ago now, where I needed some voltage to power a digital RPM meter and it needed to be DC voltage. And I just used, well actually I used this exact board right here because if you look on the labeling, we have nine volts positive and ground. And the fact that it has positive and ground tells you that it is DC voltage. And so I was able to use this to power that digital RPM meter. Now, if we look further down, we have ground and five volts. So a lot of modern things that normally would be powered, say with a USB, let's say it's a fan or those kind of things are now being powered with five volt. So we've got a five volt output there. We've got a five volt output here. We've got a nine volt output there. So this could be used if nothing else, simply as a power supply. If we look at this one, again, similar configuration, you've got a nine and you've got a G, so that's nine volts and ground. If I look on it anywhere else, I'm not seeing a power output like we have on this one. So this one doesn't have the five volts, at least not that I'm seeing, but it's also a whole lot smaller. So if nine volts is what you need, that would be a simple, easy way to go. So is that it? Is that all we can use these for is a power supply? And the answer is no. If we look at the labeling on this board, right there it says PWM, which means this is designed to take in a pulse width modulating signal. So what does that mean? What, is, what good does that do us? Well, this is a pulse width modulator and it's designed to create a pulsing signal. And it is also used to hack any number of different treadmill motor controllers. If we look here on the output, this takes a pulse width signal. So if I take and go ahead and plug this in, just like that, if you look at the label, we've got PWM going to blue. We've got TCH, which stands for TAC, that's not currently hooked up. We've got plus 9V, which is nine volts, and we've got ground. And the same is true on this pulse width modulator. The blue is going to the PWM, the volts negative is going to the black and white wire, and volts positive is going to the red wire. So with this pulse width modulator wired up to this board going into the pulse width modulation signal input, we can now use the H, W, and L terminals coming out of this board as a variable resistor. Now, why on earth would we wanna add this component and this big obnoxious component when it can all be done with that right there? This is a potentiometer, a variable resistor, and with the turn of a knob, I can change resistance. What good does that do me? Well, it depends on what you're wanting to set up. This is designed to plug into the HW and L terminals on the MC60 and control that MC60 speed based on the resistance generated right there. 
What if you wanted to have digital control over a potentiometer? In other words, this is analog. We turn this one direction, resistance goes down, we turn it the other direction, it goes up, and that directly correlates to speed. But what if we wanted to have some sort of intelligence controlling our system? A lot of people, rather than using a pulse width modulator signal generator, will use an Arduino to control a board that would normally require one of these. So like an MC2100 or an MC1618. And what's nice about having Arduino is you have the ability to program and set features. So potentially you could use a more advanced system like that. And then now you have an output that is a variable resistance. Now it does require a three wire hookup. So you can't just hook this up to the basic SCR voltage controller that I show in my other videos. But with the three wire, if there is something you wanna control, oh, I don't know, like an MC60, you could do it. And you could set up inputs so that that Arduino is controlling everything and doing it intelligently. Now, why would we want that? Well, let's say we wanted, oh, I don't know, cruise control. You wanted to be able to set it at 200 RPM and you want some computer to intelligently monitor that RPM and adjust accordingly. Well, a more advanced system could do that. If, if we had something that had a little bit of a brain right here, a little bit of programming, it could now read a TAC output like a hall sensor type switch and adjust accordingly to change the resistance coming out of here and allow you to control the speed here. So that's gonna make this definitely more usable in some situations. Like if you had this powering a treadmill motor that was in a lathe, as you take a deep cut, the system may bog. But if you have an intelligent brain saying, okay, the system is bogging, we've lost some RPM, we need to increase a little power going to it. It can make that adjustment. And then when the tool is pulled back, it says, okay, speed is ramping up, we need to slow it back down. Now, what I don't know is how quickly those reactions would happen and how much lag time there would be. But in general, that would help control this and keep the speed a little more consistent. Also, with a more complicated brain, you could set it up with specific settings. Let's say you were putting this in a bandsaw and you wanted it to be at six different speeds for six different materials that you might be cutting. Having something a little more intelligent here would allow you to set it at those things. You push button one for the first speed, button two for the second speed, and so on and so forth. So I can see a lot of uses for this as a variable resistor. The other thing that's nice about this is it's got power in and out where both of these, so you've got your neutral is here and here and your hot is here and here. And there's direct continuity between these two blades and between these two blades. Same is true here and here. So it makes wiring pretty simple. So if I was wiring this up to this MC60, I would come in with my power to these two legs and now we can jump our power out to the AC inputs on the MC60. So those are the two other uses that I have seen for these boards right here. The one with the variable resistor that has potentially some computer control is very intriguing to me and I may play with that in the future. But for right now, we're just gonna throw these in a box. But if you know of any other things that you can do with these boards, I would love to hear about it. Please don't hesitate to put it down in the comments. And maybe I will look into it further and it might end up as a video. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.